Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to provide everybody an update on diatomaceous earth, or a product that we commonly call DE. Uh, a study has recently been released by the University of Kentucky and published in one of our trade journals called PCT that talked a little bit about the effectiveness of DE. And, you know, since I started filming Bedbug TV back in 2008, you know, we have largely been talking about DE in very positive light, you know, saying that it, it can be effective for bed bugs, and, you know, you don't want to rely on it as a sole treatment tool, meaning that DE will not necessarily solve your bed bug infestation, but it can provide value when treating your home for bed bugs. And that was kind of our take home for many, many years. Now, this study that was recently published by the University of Kentucky. What they did, and so it's interesting, you know, when you talk about a, a treatment protocol, so where you're using several different things to, to, you know, treat a bed bug infestation, at the end of the day, it's tough to figure out exactly what's killing bed bugs. And so let's just say in our treatment protocol, we use a liquid pesticide, a dust, a steamer, a bed encasement, and interception devices. And, you know, we go out on day one and find 50 bed bugs and then go back on day, th you know, treatment three and, and the problem is gone. Well, what solved the problem? It's tough to say. You know, it could have been any one of those tools that we used. And so a lot of the preliminary conclusions that, that we were working with when it comes to DE was based upon lab studies where they, they treated bed bugs in a lab setting, showed that DE can kill them, and so therefore, you know, must be effective for bed bug control. And so what Kentucky did in this study is they went out and they took bed bug infestations and all they used was DE. And so what that's going to then speak to is how effective DE is as a standalone treatment tool for bed bugs. And, and the bottom line is, is what they found in this study is that they didn't get the best results with it. And so there's two different camps with kind of the conclusions that you want to take from this study. Now, what I will say up front is it caused enough concern with me to replace DE in our treatment protocol and on our stable of pesticides that we use with another type of low toxicity dust, which we actually, it's called in our industry, called Cymexa. Um, it's spelled C-I-M-E-X-A. And uh, this is a, it, it's a silica, it's called, it's made with amorphous silica gel. Uh, it's considered a very low impact type dust. And this dust for instance, in lab studies, has shown to be highly effective at killing bed bugs in a very short amount of time. And so the study by Kentucky did cause enough concern for me to switch away from DE to a different dust. But, and let me stress that but, I don't think it's necessarily a reason to sink DE in the ocean and say, you know what, we're never going to use it again. Because like I said, lab studies showed for many years that it can kill bed bugs. And I still think it can be effective as part of a treatment program. And so, when we talk about DE, we've always said it's not a standalone treatment pesticide, meaning that you don't want to just use DE, you want to use other things. We knew all along it wasn't a standalone product for bed bugs. And so this study kind of confirmed what we knew. Now, the, the results of it were, were alarming enough for me to say, you know what, there's other dusts out there that are low impact, that are kind of all natural type products. Um, or close to all natural, that we could use in its place that have been shown to be more effective. And so that's why we made the switch. It caused enough concern. But I wouldn't say that it's not worth using anymore. You know, we know it can kill bed bugs. And so I posed the question that let's say a bed bug is in an environment where we're spraying a liquid pesticide in addition to DE. Does the liquid pesticide stress the bug out enough that when it then comes in contact with DE, the DE is enough to then kill the bed bug? And so... You know, I don't want to sit here and, and tell people, you know, don't use DE. I'm definitely not saying that. I think it still can have value. But it, it showed that, you know, it confirmed that we knew it wasn't standalone treatment tool. And, uh, you know, if used in conjunction with other things, it could still have value. And so that's kind of the summation. You know, big picture, it didn't really change the way we view DE. It just caused enough concern for us to say, you know what, there's other dusts out there that, that probably have the same or better effect, and in, in most instances, better effect. And let's go out there and make a switch because there may be a better product out there. So, as I've said before, you do not want to rely solely on DE. It is not a standalone treatment tool. You want to be using other things when you're treating it. Number two, if you're using any of these products, you want to be following the directions on the label. Very, very important. 
you know, they're there for your protection. A lot of people, you know, it's view DE as this low toxicity, all natural pesticide. You know, you can find references online that you can eat certain versions of it and this, that, and the other. Remember, it's still a pesticide. And, you know, inhaling dust is never viewed as good no matter how low toxicity it is. And so you want to apply it in a sensible fashion, following the directions, and trying to keep as little, if any, airborne as possible. Because it's not, it's definitely not good to breathe it in. Um, and again, you know, if you want to use it, that's fine. Just know that it may not be one of the most effective dusts out there for bed bugs. And, you know, you want to go ahead and, and, and apply it with other things in that treatment program. All right, if you have any questions about DE or anything else that you may uh, think about with bedbugs, you know the email address, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com, and I hope to see everybody soon enough.